Hey everybody. Happy day after Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a wonderful day. Um, I did talk to some of my friends who were actually going to be celebrating Thanksgiving today. So if you're doing that today, I hope you're having a good day today. And really, I just hope you guys are all safe and sound. I said I was going to do a special edition uh, or a bonus um, episode of the bathrobe so long because last week when I was showing buttonholes um, I realized that not everybody had a fabulous buttonhole on their sewing machine and actually my buttonholer wasn't working right either so I embroidered my buttonholes so I thought I would show an option for making a buttonhole that doesn't require um, sewing a button so that's what we're going to do today, plus I'm going to show you another way to sew the pockets because I showed how to do a um, sort of a self-finished edge by lining it but also creating a binding at the same time, or the look of a binding anyway. It's when the lining wraps around the top of the pocket to create a contrasting look. So if you're interested in that and you missed that that would be in the bathrobe sew along two i think two weeks ago so check that out hi janie how are you i hope you had a happy thanksgiving um hi mary oh mary has cinnamon twist bread rising i have turkey stock simmering since yesterday my whole house smells like simmering turkey soup so Later today, I'm going to strain everything out and let it refrigerate overnight so I can skim the fat. And then tomorrow, I'm going to make my super yummy turkey soup. I'm excited about that. Actually, Mary, I miss seeing your photos of all of your baked stuff from our group. That's one of the downfalls of not having my group anymore. I can't see what you guys are doing. Um, I'm sure that your cinnamon bread is going to be wonderful. Um... And Sophie does not have puppies. There are no puppies. That was the other thing I wanted to tell you guys. Um, disappointed, but in my heart of hearts, I'm not dis I'm not really surprised because I kind of felt like that just wasn't going to happen, but I don't know. All right, so here's what we're going to do today. It's been a crazy week, and I really thought I would um, completely finish my bathrobe and get, you know, all the buttons on and cut the buttonholes and have my pockets done and so what ended up happening was I finished embroidering my buttonholes so those are done they are fray checked and ready to cut open so all I have left to do really is sew the buttons on themselves and also do the pockets so when I was working on the pocket I was going to do it the same way I showed you guys a couple uh, weeks ago and then I decided instead of doing that I would um, show you a slightly different way to do the pocket and this way works really well for um, if you're working with a stable knit and you want to make your pocket, you know, make the pocket so it's not super stretchy. Um, let me just check in here. Um, oh, Diane says your turkey soup is amazing. Sorry about Sophie. I sent you an email. Sophie, no, you got it. A question about where you got your right angle carpenter square I think I did see that Diane right angle what did I do with my right angle oh um oh here are you talking about this right angle square um let me know and Mary says if you don't make turkey soup put the liquids in cake pans, freeze it, and you'll have quarter cup sections of broth. Mary, that's an excellent idea. Maybe I'll save some so I can use it for later, because sometimes during the year I want that flavor, and I can't make a whole turkey just to get a little turkey stock. That's a really good idea. Okay, so Diane wanted to know about this is a... Let me put it on my table here. Hold on. Um, okay, so this is... A square ruler and it's perfect for when you're working on your patterns and you want to create a right angle or you want to make sure that your lines like your horizontal balance lines are completely perpendicular to your um, to your 
vertical grain line. Um, this is a fair, fair gate ruler, and I've had it for a very long time. But if you Google uh, fair gate L ruler, you'll you'll find you'll find a ton of places where you can buy it. So you can probably find them on Amazon and get free shipping, or any major online sewing store would probably have these as well. Um, but I really like this. I use this a lot. Hi, Nail Gund. Thank you for joining me. Oh, hardware store. Yep. You can probably get this at a hardware store too, like Home Depot. Um, okay, Meg says, great. I've had a problem sewing the patch pockets. They look puffy around the edges. Um, all right, so we're going to deal with those puffy edges in a minute. And I just want to finish with Diane. This one is a 24 by 14 inches. 24 long by 14 wide. Okay. And it's fair gate. See? Fair. Fair gate. Fair gate. The long eight, um, 48 inch ruler I have is also fair gate. I know I'm getting off topic, but... If you need to draw really long grain lines on pants or other things, this is an amazing ruler because it's 48 inches long. Also a fair gate. Favorite, favorite ruler. All right. All right, so now I think I've answered all the ruler questions. Hi, PG. Hope you guys had a great weekend or a great, great Thanksgiving. All right, you can see here. Let's all right. Let me show you this. Let's do the pockets first, and then I'll show you my alternative for a buttonhole. All right. So what I've done here is I cut a cotton, like a non-stretch cotton, and I'm going to put it uh, right sides together with my knit for my bathrobe, like this. And then I'm going to use my new favorite notion. Oh, before I do that, you know what I'm going to do? I want to encourage the um, this facing or lining to stay on the inside of my pocket. So what I'm going to do is along one edge, I'm going to trim off. I'll do it on this side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm actually going to trim off a quarter inch of the width of this. Maybe a scant quarter inch. <gasps> oh, that's not what I wanted to do. What a dummy. I'm sorry, let me, all right, let me just cut a quarter off this one. I wanted to cut it off the lining, um, not the pat pocket. So let me just make this match. I'm just gonna cut a little quarter off here too, just so they're consistent. All right, so what I wanna do, let me just go back to this one. On my lining pieces, I wanna cut off a quarter inch. And since I mistakenly already cut off a quarter inch on my pocket, what I'll do is I'll just trim it on both sides so it'll end up being a quarter inch. So here's the quarter that I mistakenly cut off the right side of my pocket. Then I'm just going to flip it around and cut it on this side too. So what I'm going to do here is, is I'm actually going to make the lining a little bit smaller than the pocket. And what that's going to do is it's going to convince the um, lining to stay on the inside of the pocket. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to put my pocket right sides together with the lining like this. And you can see it's a little bit small. See how it doesn't quite make it across? So what we're going to do here is I'm going to make it match on this side and we'll, we'll make it match on this side and then I'm going to sew it, and then when I go to sew over here, I'm going to make sure it's matching over here. All right, so it's slightly smaller, so when we turn it to the right side, it's going to draw in towards the inside of the pocket. So actually, I'm not even going to pin it. So let me get my sewing machine over here. Oops.
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to start with them even on this side. So the top edges are even and this side edge is even. And I'm going to sew. My knit wants to stretch. I probably should have put it on the against the feed dogs. All right now, as I come around the bottom, when I get to this side, as I start to turn the corner here, I'm just going to make sure that the part that I oops happen here. Oh, wait a minute. All right, that, all right, that's, all right, so this is now a mess. Okay, this is not working. Let me do it again, putting the knit on the bottom, which is what I should have done. So right sides together. Okay, knit on the bottom, and that'll help compensate for the stretch that's happening with the knit. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so I'm going to go around. And if my pocket's sticking out a little at the bottom, I'm just going to follow the lining edge. Now, as I come around to the other side, I am going to... even up the edge so it matches like I'm going to pull this towards the edge here so they match all right all right now let's look at this now now see how much nicer this one looks versus the one that I did with so this is with the feed dogs. With the knit facing the bottom, it worked well. With the knit on top, it really got really stretched out of shape. All right, so put your knit against the feed dogs. That's the first thing. Then let me just trim. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trim my seam allowance. I'll trim it from this side. So it's, you know, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Okay, and then we're going to turn it to the right side and because I stretched it oh Mary says um, I would think you would keep the edges even as you sewed so it would draw in all the way around that is true Mary I was just trying to do it so it would draw in on the sides oh look and I made a hole Wow, this is turning out to be a wonderful fashion Friday. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me see what I did. I cut it too close. All right, so I trimmed it too close here, so let me just fix that. There we go. Okay. I was really more concerned with keeping it, um, you know, oozing it up from side to side. So see, when I press this, you will see that from side to side, I believe it's not going to show. Oops. Do you have water up here? Okay. Okay, and then...
it is a pretty good shape because and the reason why I didn't worry about the top is to finish this top edge what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna fold it down and top stitch across the top to make a hem so I really didn't care if this got to be too long but you can see just from doing it even the messy way I did it it did a pretty good job I mean it's curling but it's not going to do that when I sew it on so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this neatly under like this and actually I think what I'm going to do also is let's just give it a press from the here on this side um, I'm just going to cut these corners off okay a little bit like that then I'm going to turn this down and actually I might as well just trim this even too like that okay and then I'm going to turn this down like this the other option is you could actually tuck both fabrics into the hole that would actually be a little bit neater if you wanted to do that. Um, but see from the right side, it looks like that. It has a nice crisp edge. And now I've got a double layer of cotton here um, to make a nice crisp edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew across the top now. So let me just see this here. Let me just all right. So I am just gonna sew across, and I'm right near the edge. Oops, I'm you can't see. We're right near that edge, and I really don't want to fight with it to go into my machine neatly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put a piece of paper here so the paper will lead in for me. And I'm gonna start by stitching, oh, let's not make the same mistake we did with the other part. I'm gonna put the knit against the feed dogs. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch really close to the edge. See, that makes a nice, smooth top edge. Okay, you can peel this paper away. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch a little bit farther down, and I'm gonna use the edge of my, um, I'm gonna use my one inch uh, marking on my needle plate here. I'm just gonna stitch this down. See, it wants to stretch because it's right near the edge, so if it's doing that, you can lift it up and put it back down. Um. Right, and so see, then you have a pocket that has a double row of stitching, you know, and it's pretty neat on the side. I can press those little gathers out but now this pocket is ready to sew on. So let me just get my iron. And I'm going to just give it a nice press here. So I've got this nice pocket, and this is actually a good size for my mom because now she can get her hand in there and put her tissues in there, and I think she'll be very happy with this size. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to sew it on now. All right, and I'm going to put the bathrobe on for a second because that's how I want to make sure that um, I'm putting it in the right spot. So let me just switch my view. So again, see I have my, my buttonholes are done, okay? And I want to make sure I put it at a level that is good to, you know, put your hand in and take your hand out so you're not reaching too far down. So I would say... You know, from, the, from this view, if I put the po top of the pocket, you know, about here, I think that that would be good. Um, so I'm going to put, I'm just going to take a, one of my wonder clips, and I'm just going to pinch this level, because this is a good level for pockets. Okay, so then I can put my hand in. Okay, so then let's take it off and look at what we have. Hi, Melanie. Oh, it's your first time watching live? Well, welcome. Um, this is the fourth episode of the Bathrobe Sew Along, so if you'd like to work on the bathrobe, I do have the pattern in my online store, and then this is there are three other videos to show how to put this bathrobe together. Um, oh, Mary wants to see the buttonholes up close. Definitely going to show you those, too. Let me just switch my view. Okay, so. The buttonholes. Well, this one still has some thread around it. So this is the buttonhole I said I was going to put in my store, and then I forgot to do that. So I will put this buttonhole in my store for free. So if anybody wants this buttonhole, um, you know, they can stitch it out. It's just a quick buttonhole that I, um, I customized it in my software. I used a double round end, and then I put two big satin stitch designs on either side to create that. So that's how I got that. Um, and the cool thing is, I showed this last week... With the button in the fabric, the little edge of the satin stitch shows around the button, so I think that's kind of cool. So that's a the fun a fun thing. So I gotta still gotta do that, but let's look at this. Okay, see so this is why I love these wonder clips because I flap this around and this did not come loose. So sometimes if I try to pin a position the pin will come out if I'm flapping my fabric around. So let me just widen my view so you can see this. All right, so I'm just going to lay this here and I'm going to look and see. Um, now my mother is shorter than me, so if this is a comfortable level for me, I'm thinking I might actually go up a little bit for her. So I have my basic guideline. Um, I'm going to put the pockets so they are, you know, a little bit closer to the side seam. You don't want to put them right on top of your center front. So I think for this bathrobe, I am going to put my pocket right here and to make it look straight I'm going to position the pocket so it's parallel to my top stitching on this front on my front um, facing top stitching is right here so I'm going to make sure that this is you know parallel to that and then we can top stitch it on Oh, Yada, 
Um, Yada, I think I'm pronouncing your name right. If I'm not, I'm very sorry. Yada says, beautiful buttonholes, great idea. Okay, and I will put a link at the bottom of this video later to my online store that will have this buttonhole, and you can download it for free. I mean, it's just a little buttonhole that I, you know, did in my customizing software, so I'm very happy to give it to you guys. All right, so I'm going to pin my pocket, and I can see that my lining still is showing here a little bit, but um, I'll do a neater job on the other one. I think sometimes when I'm trying to show you guys, I get all excited. It's not my best sewing. I always sew better off camera. So I'm sorry for my whatever. What I was trying to show you about the pocket is, and I think Mary's right, because she said, I think I could have just gone over here and pinned it even over here too. Um, so it would have been all set. So I'm going to take this one apart and I'm going to try to stitch it better. That was a very bad job. I mean, the ultimate, or the overall effect of it worked out fine, but I really wanted to show you that it wouldn't show through. So I'll fix that one in a minute. But anyway, what I want to do now is, let me just pin this. And I'm pinning so I don't have to take the pins out. So I'm pinning a little bit away from the edge. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my sewing machine. So see, I've pinned it like that. Okay. Let me just see here. Oh, Melanie wants to know what software I use. I use the um, Premiere Plus version 2 for Foth and Viking so, uh, sewing machines. And the thing about Foth is Foth lets you bring... And the other ones may too, but Fav has a lot of really big, they're called maxi stitches, um, and bigger 9 millimeter stitches. So I picked two stitches, and then I made them a little bit bigger in the software. So a lot of these um, embroidery softwares will allow you to use the built-in built stitches in your machine and bring them into your software to combine them to make different things. So that's how I did that. And I also use the built-in buttonhole from the machine. You know, it allows you to just bring it in. All right, let me just fix my view here a little bit. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have a lot of bathrobe here, so I'm just going to start on this side. So part of it is fabric management. So you can see here, I've got all of my bathrobe is right here. Um, and I'm gonna just start right here at the top. And I'm gonna lengthen my stitch to like three for this. And I'm just gonna stitch it. I'm just gonna go around. Now when you go to, when you come to the uh, going around the curves, lift your presser foot and let everything relax a little bit if it looks like it's starting to bunch up. Like that. You know, and take your time around the corners. Okay, and then see, I'm going to just try to keep my fabric from pooling on the area that I'm sewing. Lift this up a little bit, let it relax. Lift it up, let it relax, pivot a little bit. Okay. Now I've got the easy side because the fabric is all over here. I think not having to take out your pins is helpful. All right. 
there's, I think there's something with this fabric that I'm using because here it started to gather up a little bit, just a little bit. I think that'll press right out, but it's just funny the direction. Um, you can see there's the pocket. Okay, so that's on. Um, you know, and I'm gonna, let me just, and let me just hang this up for a second. I just want to revisit that second pocket again and see if I can just do a neater job. All right, let me just hang this up. Yeah, I think from where this is, um, it's going to be nice for my mom there. It does need a press. I'll press it after. But let me just get this back over here. I'm just going to quickly take this out. And then we're going to try it again because that was very bad. Bad, bad, bad. And then the next thing I'm going to do after that is I'm just going to show you how to do a, um, I have a version of a bound buttonhole. And of course, I made a messy sample, but my mess is going to be the what not to do portion. Um, Emma says, first time live watcher, I appreciate you showing things that don't always go as planned. It helps to know it's not just me. Love your pocket demo. What is, what is the brand of the iron you are using? Um, the, I am using... Um, I am using the Aliso iron. I love it. I'll show you, I'll bring it up here and show it again. Um, I love the little feet and how you can't, um, burn the surface because if you leave it flat for a while, I mean the feet pop up so it's not hitting the surface that you're, you left it on so you can't burn your ironing board. And, um, I guess I'm a social influencer for Aliso because they gave me that iron so but I will tell you if I didn't like it I would tell you I didn't like it I love it and I also have they have a mini version too if anybody's looking for a good stocking stuffer um, or they need a gift for a good sewing friend the mini iron that Aliso has is really adorable and it's a powerhouse it burnt I had it sitting on its silicone resting pad on my cutting board and it melted my cutting board so it's like serious heat okay so here are some suggestions that might help me in my next um, in my next attempt at this Carolyn suggested that I baste first and you know what if you baste first I guarantee you that it will be it will come out better if you baste first yes but I'm going to try not to do that because basting is my least favorite thing on the universe to do. Um, but yes, if you want to baste, you can baste. And Yada says maybe lower the pressure a little on the presser foot. Um, and Nilgund agrees with Emma. Yes, well, the one thing is I will always be humble. <laughs> And I will always be with you guys because I make more mistakes than anybody. And half the time it's because I'm cruising along thinking I've got it all going and then something happens. So, you know, mistakes happen. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Let me fix this so we can see. Let's try this again. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get it in gear on both sides. So I'm going to use my my Wonder Clips because I know they're going to hold it. And I think Diane pointed out last week that the red side is face up and the flat side of this Wonder Clip is straight, so that'll smooth on the machine better. So see, I'm going to become a pro at using Wonder Clips now. So I'm going to pin this with my Wonder Clips around the corner here. I think I thought I could just whiz it together without pinning, but sometimes you have to pin. All right, so see, I've got that laying nice and flat. Now I'm gonna go around and do this side. So this is a do not just wing it and 
um, pin it together and then it will work. All right. Oops. And again, put the knit down against the feed dogs. Oh, PG says basting is a four letter word to Jen. Yes, that's true. But we do know my friend Gail likes to baste. Gail is the basting queen. I miss Gail. I never get to see her anymore because of this whole COVID-19 situation. Um, hoping we can get together soon. All right. All right, so see, I've got it pinned all the way around. And from this side, the knit is probably stretching to match it. I probably could have even made it a little bit narrower, but I pinned it to match all the way around and I think I should be able to just sew it now. Let's see if we can do it without basting. Against the feed dogs. Oh yeah, see this is working much better. Oh, but I'm not showing you. Now across the bottom, I'm going to do a little bit of a deeper seam because I trimmed some off of the other side and I want it to match. So I'm just going to come up a little bit bigger on the bottom. Okay, so Diane is right. These pins work much better um, if you have the the clear side against the machine. Okay, let's see here. All right. All right, so you can see that's sewed together much nicer. So take the time to pin. And if you want to baste, I don't think there's anything wrong with basting. It's just not my favorite thing. All right, so I'm gonna finish this pocket later. What I wanna show you now is I made this. So we were talking last week about not having a good buttonholer and I came up with this idea. I mean, I'm sure I didn't come up with it myself, but um, what this is is I used a piece of the yellow non-stretch cotton to create my opening for my buttonhole. And then you could actually leave it at that because you can just sew around, um, but then the the pink the yellow would show. So what I did was I made a circle circular shaped sort of um, welts. Basically, these are mini welts, but they're shaped into a circle. I folded them in half, and then I put them together into the window to make this buttonhole. We'll see. So I'm going to show you how to do this, and I think this is a fun. Um, this will be a fun buttonhole, like if you don't want to sew one on your machine. So the first thing you're going to need to do is cut yourself a little piece of, um, you know, something that doesn't stretch. And actually, you know what, it could also be interfacing now that I'm thinking about it. Like you could cut your little square out of interfacing um, and then that would hold you could fuse it to the wrong side. See, I'm just developing this into maybe a little bit of a better topic. Hold on, let's try that. All right, so this is just a very lightweight sheer interfacing. All right, so let me try this. I'm actually more excited about this now that I just thought of this here. Hold on. Let me just cut a little square of this. So you could use the cotton would work, um, and I'll explain to you why it looks a little messy here when we get to that step, but um, I'm going to try it with this this time. So if I'm going to put this um, against, like you're going to mark where you want your buttonhole to go, okay, so I'll just mark it like this. 
So let's pretend our buttonhole was going to be here. Did I make a vertical? Oh, let's do a vertical one. So let's pretend this is our buttonhole right here. That's where we want it. And the beauty of it is you can draw your line, you know, a little bit, you know, the size of your opening. You know what I mean? So you could actually draw the buttonhole on your fabric. And then with the interfacing, I could actually see th through it. So you put the glue side face up at this point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little rectangle around my marking on my fabric. I think I can draw in here. And I'm going to make it just a scant quarter or maybe even a little narrower. Okay, so you make yourself like a little rectangle and I'm dotting it along here. Okay. Okay, can you see that? Alright, so now I'm going to get my machine and I'm just going to sew along my line and you want to use a relatively small stitch length here. So I'm just going to sew to one end. I'm going to stop and I'm going to pivot. I counted four stitches on that end, the short end, so when I get to the other side I'm going to do four stitches again. And then I'm going to count four stitches, one, two, three, four. Oh, you know what, I think I need like a half a stitch more. All right, and then I'm just going to overlap my start point. All right, so now what I'm going to do um, is I am going to use my sharp little scissors. And actually, I'll start with my rotary cutter. I'm just going to cut a little slit in the middle of my buttonhole. This is like, see this little hole right like that? And then I'm going to clip into the corner and you really want to clip right to the corner but not through the corner okay so it looks like that okay now we're going to push all this through this is very, very similar to when I showed how to do that welt pocket. Okay, so see, so you push it through, and I'm going to get my iron. My lovely Aliso iron. All right, and what I'm going to do here is, because it's interfacing, I really can't fuss around with Usually I press my seam allowances open at this point, but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be doing that because I've got interfacing here. I'm going to just sort of make sure I can get a nice, um, I want to make sure my corners are nice. And I'm going to finger press. Okay, and then after I finger press, I am just going to cut... I'm going to leave like a quarter inch or maybe, I don't know, a half an inch. I'm going to cut off the extra that I don't need because I want to cover this with my knit, my knit circular welts. So this part, part is a little bit fussy. And actually, you know what I can do? I can take my pin and pin it to this. This is like a cut and press board that I use. I can actually hold it down with the pins to get the nice shape. That'll work really well, I think. Can you see me? 
I'm just going to put some pins here. Okay, so I could actually use the pins to create the shape. So I'll put two there. And see, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this extra fabric. I don't need it to be that wide. All right, and then I think what I need to do is put the pin in so it's flush with the fabric like that. Okay, so it's laying flat, and then I can actually press it. I'll do half at a time because we want to hold that interfacing down. Okay, and then let's do the other side. And I just want to cut this a little bit shorter on this end over here. All right, so I'm going to put the pins in so I could just iron right on them. Don't do this with plastic head pins. Make sure you're using glass head pins for this. So I'm just going to iron that. Okay. And see how the legs just lift up my iron? I love that. All right, and then you can see my pink line is showing. So, you know, use something that washes away for real because the pink got on the, the knit a little bit. But see, that makes a nice hole. So depending on the kind of button you're using, if you, you know, didn't care about this showing, you could just, that could be your buttonhole, but I don't want that showing. So what I'm going to do is I had, um, I'm going to use my wonder tape as my circle pattern piece. And I am going to cut out two circles and I'll just start by, you know, drawing the you know, just drawing it in on here, and then I can just cut it out. Oh, I didn't show you that, sorry. All right, so I just used my roll of Wonder Tape to make a circle that was about the size I needed. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut that out. All right, and to get a nice shape for my circle, I am just going to cut off and around and off. And then, you know, I'll just cut off until I get myself around. Instead of trying to go around in one motion, this will make a neater circle. Okay. All right, so I've got my circles. Okay, so now the next step is, you know, and it doesn't have to be a circle, it could be a square. I just thought circles would be fun. So I am going to fold this on, so my stripes are going to go sort of on the bias. Oops. And then I'm just going to press them into two little mini circular welts like this. Okay, and okay, so those are my two welds. You can see when I put them together, they'll be, you know, my stripes will be going in two different directions. So you can play with that and decide how you want your um, stripes to go if you're working with a stripe. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this lovely, um, 
this lovely wonder tape and I'm going to put it right above and below my hole that I made for my welt. So one on each side. Okay, just going to pull the paper off, this one, sometimes the paper doesn't want to come off. Alright, so I've got that off, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a dot sort of in the middle of the side to give me a guideline to line up my folded edges. So I'm going to just position them so they meet in the middle, like this. Okay, so if we look at it from the right side, see now we've got this cool, oops, I have to reposition this one a little bit more. Okay, like this. So see how cool that is? So then to finish this, what we're going to do is bring my machine back over. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch from the right side around the end to hold it together there. All right, so and I'm going to make my stitch length is going to be relatively short here because I want to be able to get a good corner. So I'm stitching just onto the um, edge of the bathrobe. Then I'm gonna look, I gotta go one more stitch. Then I'm going to stitch across the end. One more. And then I'm gonna stitch down this side. this end and then I'm just going to overlap my start point Oops. all right so now I've sewn the welts around the opening so then from the wrong side I am just going to stitch around my circles and I think I'm just going to even up some of this that looks a little uneven. I'm just going to give it a little haircut here. Alright, so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch around the edge of my circle. You know, and that top stitching will show. That's why I'm saying you could make it any shape you want. It doesn't have to be a circle. I think a circle is a little more challenging. But I'm just picking it up as I go a little bit to let it relax. You can also trace a smaller circle on the right side that you know is a little bit smaller than the diameter you used here and then sew it from the top side if you wanted to. But see, the nice thing about using knit to make your welts is it doesn't ravel. So if you have a coordinating, let's say you were using that waffle weave for your bathrobe, you could use a knit um, fabric to do the, the welts on this type of buttonhole. 
All right, so we're all done there. So see so you have a circle shaped top stitching around the buttonhole. So that's, that's an option, you know, if you don't want to stitch your buttonholes on your machine. Um, but I think this makes a nice, a nice option. Okay, so that's, um, you know, that's my buttonhole option. And then, of course, from the wrong side, you could then trim this really close, too. So if you were a little bit wider from the edge, you could just tidy it up after it's sewn. But I think this makes it nice. My wonder tape was longer than I needed here. I can just trim that right off. See? So that is the welt buttonhole, or a bound buttonhole, you know, whatever you want to call it. All right, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. If anybody has any um, questions or comments, you know, please let me know and I will help you. Um, you know, what a couple people are emailing me or messaging me on Instagram. If you want to show me your progress or, um, you know, comment to me and you want me to see it immediately, if you follow me on Instagram, J Stern Designs on Instagram, you could message me. That's the way I'm messaging since my Facebook is still not fixed. But I do have a glimmer of hope because my social media manager also got kicked off Facebook when I got kicked off Facebook from the hackers and she got her account back. So I'm hoping my account will come back. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. But in the meantime, I'm here on YouTube and I'm on Instagram. So you can also message me and send me pictures on Instagram. Um, let's see. Jane says, I love that welt buttonhole. Thank you, Jane. And, uh, Lazarus says, beautiful buttonhole, I like it. Maybe use a little contrasting for the welts and the top stitching. Absolutely. You can definitely jazz it up with different colors. And, you know, you could use, um, like, faux suede or, you know, to do the welts. That would be nice, too. Like, so if you're using a heavier waffle fabric and you don't want to use knit, like, faux suede is nice or, like, you know, faux leather would be nice for this. Um, Nil Gun says, haven't finished buttonholes, I'm going to make mine welt buttonholes. Oh, yay, I'm glad. And Meg says, thanks for the info, for the info about the pocket. I'll try making them again using a lighter weight lining. Um, and Mary said, that's a great buttonhole, um, idea. Thank you. Right, well, I, wanted, I really wanted to give an option because I know buttonholes are a challenge for some people because sometimes machines um, are not agreeable, especially if you're using a heavier fabric for your bathrobe. Oh, Mary has to go knead her bread. Okay, you enjoy, Mary. Um, I'll see you next week. All right, so I think that's really what I wanted to show for today. So please... You know, if you have questions or comments, or if you get into a snag, send me pictures on Instagram. Okay, and then, or you can email them to me too. And my email is below in the description, and I'll help you. Um, or if you need advice or whatever, I can help you. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm on the search for a couch. I need a new sofa in the worst way, so um, that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend, is looking for a new sofa. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys have a great, safe weekend, and I will see you for Fab Fit Friday next week, and it'll be a completely new topic, so um, it'll be a surprise, so I'm sure it's going to be, whoa, Anna, <laughs> my daughter just choked <laughs> on her water, oh dear, okay, she's okay, she'll make it. All right, you guys, have a great rest of your day, thank you for joining me, I really appreciate it. I'll see you next week.